Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're continuing on with our Promises of God journal, Purple Journal by Esther Steele. Is it Promises of God? No. Peace of God. <laughs> Peace of God journal. Whoops. Got that mixed up. Anyways, and um, we're going to be making one of these miniature journal dangle things to be able to hook on our journal somewhere. Okay, so let me show you that it actually it actually opens up has a little pages little writing pages okay teeny tiny and um, this one I just have elastic band a clear elastic holding it closed because I haven't come out with a great way of keeping it closed but this is what we're gonna make if you have a great idea to help me out with figuring out how to keep that closed let me know okay so I meant to kind of give you guys some measurements I meant to like write that down uh, before I started filming, but I didn't. So I'm going to tell you now. This is two and an eighth in length, and then it's one and a half in width. That's the front and back cover pieces, and then and these are just cut out of cereal boxes, as I always do. And then again, two and an eighth in length for the spine, and then three eighths. In width so you need two pieces for the spine and you need four pieces total for front and back cover two for the front two for the back so you can also then make them bigger I've made some this size which are three inches by one and a half and then the spine is of course three inches by three eighths so totally up to you which you decide to go with I'm going to be using the bigger size uh, on this part to show you show you how I kind of make the cover and then I'll, I'll show you in just a minute I'll be switching okay so I'm gonna cut these corners here off oh I should measure my fabric that would be helpful information one in it okay well let's do that my fabric something like five inches by four and a fourth which, I mean, it's too big. I make them, I, I cut my fabric a bit too big. Uh, just, just because I would rather it be too big than too small. If it's too small, well, then you can't cover the cardboard. So, let me zoom in. Maybe I'll stay in frame. There we go. I ask if you want me to zoom you in while um, also not really giving you a choice in the matter because uh, by the time I found out the video would already be filmed so it's just the way it is <laughs> okay so I put some glue on that side and I wrap the fabric around then I typically take my ruler like so and I am pushing up against that cardboard to make sure it's all the fabrics tight and then I'm going to take my spine and make sure that your uh, print of your chipboard, your cereal box, is facing you. Um, some fabrics, you, you'll see it through it, so, and you don't want that. So make sure it's facing you while you're doing this. After I've gotten my measurement there, I'm just going to remove the... Um, ruler that was giving me that space between my pieces put some glue on the top and fold it over and this is very much of just holding your pieces <laughs> in place um, after putting that ruler there you don't want them to shift around on you if they do just put the ruler back in place and make sure everything's fine and next piece, let's set it there. This piece is kind of the harder one to achieve. And now I do this somehow. Every time I do it, it's like, how did I do this again? <laughs> I've only made quite a few covers like this. And sometimes I can tell, like, 
this it's not close enough at the top here so I'm just gonna slide it over to where it looks about right I very much eyeball this piece just to make sure it's in proper place and you're gonna put some glue at the top of that one there and begin to fold this over I know that this is kind of a tricky cover you could put glue on your pieces and then stick them to the fabric and then come back and fold all the pieces over just know that your glue is probably going to show through and if that bothers you then you're probably not going to want to do that um, if the glue does show through and it bothers you you can you do have the option of taking like some lace and trying to cover it um, so if you just went around the edge of each piece and then laid it down you could very easily take some trim or lace or something covered. I've done that before. It's entirely up to you. And there's simpler ways of making covers. This is just how I like to make a hardcover journal. It's preference. I'm going to trim th this fabric over here because it's just way too much. I don't need that much. And then I'm going to kind of trim the corners this way maybe if it'll allow me to once I've done that I'm going to kind of peel this layer back and trim that off you just don't want this fabric getting in the way while you are folding <laughs> the pieces over And if this is the first time you're making a cover like this, I would recommend using something like cotton as opposed to satin like I am using. Satin's just a little bit more difficult to work with. It likes to slide around everything quite a bit. I cut off a bit too much fabric there. It is what it is. Just pulling those corners in, trying to get them covered as much as possible. As you can see though, I did cut way too much fabric. I can't get this one covered really because of it. And uh, this one will probably need some book corners. That's the solution to that problem. <laughs> okay. So then once you've done this, you repeat the process. So then you have it inside cover and uh, outside cover. And then just kind of line them up to see whether or not they line up very well. And I'm realizing I haven't pulled these corners in. So I'm just going to lay some glue down. Just kind of try to pull. I got way too much glue there, so now it's going to be a bit stubborn. But typically, just putting a little bit of glue, they'll stick down and pull in. Okay. So once you got both pieces done, put glue all around the edge. Up and stick them together. Now I take some of these clips, binder clips, I like to kind of focus closer to the corners with the clips at first. put a few more on again make these journals whatever size you want whatever works best for you and then I'll just I'll lay it somewhere to dry once I get to that point put my 
glue top back on. So at this point, you want one that's dry <laughs> for the next steps, which I already have one. And you remember all those little pieces of paper that we cut off the ends of our paper uh, for our journal that I told you to keep? Yeah, you need those because your pages should be two inches in width by three inches in length. Of course, this is too long. I had to cut a little bit off of mine, but it should be, I said about two inches in width and three inches in length. Here I have a whole bunch already folded and stacked inside of each one another. So just itty bitty pages. And then you remember whenever I said you only need two spines, actually three. I take that back. So make another one. And I just went in about an eighth of an inch and I drew a line. And then I went in on this side about an eighth of an inch and I drew a line. And then I came down here a little more than a fourth, but not, not by much. Just a little bit. I drew a line there, a little more than a fourth, and I drew a line there. And then I came in about two inches. Which, hold on. No, that isn't two inches. Up. <laughs> it's like that something doesn't add up there. Um, about an inch. That's what it is. Yeah, so about an inch to be in the middle, and then I poked my holes. Hope you can see that. So I have three holes. I'm doing a three hole pamphlet stitch. And I have learned that to poke holes in these little itty bitty journals, best thing to do is to clip your spine guide to your spine. Because otherwise it will shift around on you and you will not be happy about it. So then I take my awl and I patch my holes. being stubborn. Okay. It went through. Take the clips off. And then go ahead and get your needle and thread ready. So I'll show you that now. So I typically say three links, but on this one, I'm kind of going actually a little bit over three links, and then I'm going to double it. This may be a bit of a long video. I apologize in advance. <laughs> If I can thread my needle. Okay. Okay, so then set your needle and thread aside. Take your awl and your spine guide. And you're going to take your pages and open it up to about middle. You're going to lay your spine guide in here like so. And then what I do is I just line my awl up. If I can show you this. I line it up with the holes. I fold my pages back over and I punch through. My guide kind of shifted a bit. So then take your needle and thread and put it in the middle. And if you know how to do this, then I suppose you can skip this part and put it in the middle hole in my spine to my journal. And then 
either go through the top or the bottom. Maybe. I'm struggling to find this one. Okay, I'm going to punch back through this way. Maybe. What happened to that hole? Oh yeah, I, I went in it weird. This is that one that I was struggling with <laughs> to get the all to go through. Okay. As you can see, I kind of buggered up my spine on this one. Maybe you can't see because I'm not on camera. Okay, this one is not working with me. I think it's because I've kind of messed up the spine. I was too rough with it punching my holes. There. Just force it back through. All that fiddling with that hole in the spine. Now my pages are being stubborn. They'll shift on you if you don't clip them, but at the same time, you need teeny tiny clips for uh, the small of a journal, or it'll just get in your way. Pulling some of this thread back this way because I've now I've got it too much going that way. I'm gonna put my needle through my pages again in the middle. middle hole and then go through the middle hole on the spine and I oftentimes have the thread getting wrapped around pages or my the corners of my cover so if you're fighting that uh, I do the same thing these little journals are kind of fiddly Now going back through, or not going back through, but going through the top hole. And then under that thread, tie a knot. like to tie it three times and then I'll come back later and uh, tie it in a bow but I won't do that on camera <laughs> I've done it on camera before but this thread like I said it's fiddly so let's go ahead and try to get our other one. Oh yeah I still got punch holes in this one how much time do we have this video is taking quite a while forgive me <laughs> Just hit fast forward. <laughs> Maybe at one of these days I'll learn how to edit a video so that I can fast forward it for you. Okay, just punching these holes again. Maybe you want to learn this again. <laughs> Maybe I messed up too much the first time. <laughs> Hopefully this one will go better. I 
On the plus side, I don't make binding look like it's a piece of cake when it's not. It does come with its difficulties. Is it worth it? I think so. Anytime you struggle to get your needle through, you can always put your all back through it. And typically just realign your pages. You don't have to necessarily punch another hole. Oftentimes just realign it. Okay, I pulled that thread way too short. So, I think it's this one that I want to pull on. Yep. Okay, maybe it's long enough. Oh, I need to go underneath this one. Then we'll tie it in on it. And I am just using regular thread on this one. I like sewing thread. Even Bibles are bound with basically sewing thread. So I know typically with our journals we use that very thick wax linen thread. It's not as necessary as it's been made out to be. So just know that. If it's an itty bitty journal, I'm gonna use something like regular sewing thread. Me personally. Okay, so we have several more steps before we're finished with this. Um, now I've lost my pieces. Okay, here's part of it. I'm not sure, oh, okay, there's the rest of it. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this a little piece of lace. This itty bitty flower. And glue it down with some fabric tech. Like so. And then I'm going to take this piece of God label from Esther Steele's kit. I'm going to add some glue. To the front of the cover. I'm just going to kind of smear that around a bit with my finger. As if there isn't enough glue already on my finger. I'm just going to stick that down to the front. And you need an eyelet and some sort of chain with the clasp thingy on it, or even just the circle 
uh, things that you open up, those little rings. I think I'm going to use this bronze violet, is it? Or do I want this darker one? I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out in a minute. So going to the back of the cover. And taking my crop it out by we are memory keepers. And I want to make sure I am very close to the edge. Because if not, the I let the or the ring that I have will not uh, go through. I think I want this darker one. And then again, using the We Are Memory Keeper Cropper Dial to uh, take care of that eyelet. Squish it. This is actually, or was actually, a closure to a bracelet or some sort of like jewelry piece, or maybe it was an extender for jewelry. I'm not sure, but I just kind of altered the rings on it. So that I could put it on my journal. Okay, I gotta open this up more. This little ring here. Close it back up. Oh. oh, I've lost the ring. I have another one. Which means we're not doing that right now. <laughs> I'm going to have to get another ring or find that one. Um, there's something else though that I wanted to do with this. Where's my... There it is. I have this trim and I have some scissors somewhere. I'm just going to cover up my binding with this, I think. saddens me because I don't think I can find another ring very easily in my room. Just put a couple strips of glue and lay the brick rack. I don't know what I just called this. It's rick rack, though. So. I'll just trim the one that's too long. Just like so. And once you get your uh, little ring on it in your chain, then it looks like this and it becomes a spine dangle or anywhere that you can want to hook it to your journal or maybe you want to make it into a key ring and carry it around with you. A few options there. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you use up your scraps on this little project. Thanks so much for watching. Sorry for all the fumbling crafter um, experience <laughs> that you got to go through with me. But anyways, I hope that you enjoyed the video regardless. Bye guys.